G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and uh, recently I've been doing something that I would, I don't know, for want of a better word, I call it 10 year old girl training. And uh, this came about a bit of a bit of an epiphany I had this year. I was at a horse expo in New Zealand and it's, the horse expo is called Equidays. It's one of my favourite places to go to. New Zealand is one of my favourite places to go to and Equidays is one of my favourite um, horse expos to do. And uh, there was a uh, late one afternoon there was a i did a session in the afternoon and there was another uh horseman someone i highly respect as both a human being and as a horseman uh he was doing the night show that night and uh the night show started at six o'clock and he was supposed to do a, a session from four to five thirty but he wasn't gonna have time to get his horses ready for the night show so he asked me would i go and do the session and uh the session was on uh it was on problem solving under saddle is what it was called and so this guy's quite um, well known has a big following and so i went over there there's a crowd of people in the grandstands there waiting to see him and i had to break the news to him sorry you don't get this guy you only get me sorry about that and then when they brought the horse in they didn't bring a horse under saddle they brought in a uh, kamanawa which is a wild horse in new zealand it was a young four-year-old kamanawa um, with a halter and lead rope like this and I'm like okay this is not good first of all the guy they want to see is not here and second of all the problem they want to see is not here and so I said to the lady so what's this horse's story and she said oh well my 10 year old daughter broke him in she started him and I said oh yeah and I was being facetious and I said she ever ridden in bareback? And she goes, oh, she, he, she only ever rides in bareback. I'm like, oh, good, let me get on. I'll show you problem solving under saddle. And so I get the lead rope and I throw it over here and I tie it up and I jump on. And when I jump on in front of a crowd of people, he takes off bucking down the arena. So I'm riding this, and he's not bucking, like bucking, bucking, but has a bit of a hump off down the arena. So here I'm in front of a crowd of people about to fall off. Um, anyway, so... We've got that bit sorted, but I noticed with this horse, when I asked him to steer to the right, and I'm just talking about just pick up real lightly on the lead rope to steer to the right, he would stop. Oh, sorry, first he would shake his head violently from side to side. And if I didn't pull harder, I just held onto it. He'd shake his head, and if that didn't make me let go, he'd stop and stamp his right front foot really hard. And if that didn't work, then he'd rear up twice. And if that didn't work, and I kept my hand out there, then he went, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go to the right now. But he tried the whole head shake thing, the stamp, the front foot, and the rear up, which was quite interesting bareback. Uh, anyway, by the end of the session, I could steer him around to the right a little bit, and he, and he just would just go off to the right when I asked instead of arguing about it. So I'm thinking, wow, this is pretty wild. This, you know, this 10-year-old girl rides his horse bareback. Wow. Anyway, so then... I get to go in to watch the night show and have a VIP section there. So I'm, I'm, I'm planning on sitting in the VIP section, drinking beer, watching the night show. But then they asked me, would I, um, would I help judge the night show? Part of the night show, there's a competition called New Zealand's Got Talent. And so there was Dan Steers and Vicky Wilson and myself were going to uh, judge this competition. And they had a kids section first, and it's a talent thing, you know, it's like a, you can do Liberty, you can do, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. There was some, some people did Liberty stuff, some people came in and did bareback and bridleless stuff. But they'd bring in the obstacles that they're gonna use and they'd do their deal and they'd take those out and bring in other obstacles. I mean, the first one was the kids one and the kids were absolutely amazing. Like, the little girl that won it was absolutely amazing and her story was, you know, there wasn't a dry eye in the house, it was pretty amazing. This little girl had got kicked in the face by a horse and broke every bone in her face except her jaw, I think, and had to have all sorts of reconstruction surgery. And she came and jumped her horse bareback and bridleless. It was very, very, very cool. But uh, I digress, sorry, long story. So at some point in time, this little horse comes in, this girl's riding it bareback in a halter, and they've got all these obstacles out here, and it's going over quite a few of them, but there was one obstacle, and it was a raised, like a, a, a balance beam for a gymnast. You know, it was about that wide, and it was about 10 feet long, you know, three meters long. And it was off the ground a bit. Anyway, this girl was riding around and all of a sudden I realized it's the horse I rode this afternoon and she's not really having too much trouble with it at all. And then she heads over towards that balance beam thing and I, Vicky Wilson was sitting next to me and I said to Vicky, there is no way this horse is gonna go across that thing. This horse walks along, steps on it, almost had to 
flat its front feet like that to walk along it, but it walked along it front and back feet all the way, rode off the other end, I was flabbergasted. Then she did something else, and then she jumped off, and she had it going beside her at Liberty, and she ran along beside that thing, and what did that horse do? It climbed up on that thing and walked down it, and didn't fall off it at Liberty. And I was just amazed, and I'm like, I know that horse, I rode that horse this afternoon, that horse really is half broke at best sort of thing and then I got to think about it what is it and, and and all the kids that night were the same like their horses were absolutely amazing they got to think about it what is it the 10 year old girls do with their horses that we don't and which is what I'm doing right now with Sherlock is just hanging out with them and so lately I've been doing quite a bit of 10 year old girl training especially with Sherlock Sherlock was a very shut down horse when we first got him had no interaction with you didn't you know didn't want to look at you had no expression, and I've been doing lots of 10-year-old uh, girl stuff with Sherlock. I lead him around, I've got little obstacles out there, I lead him over the obstacles, I hang out with him, I just go up to him and scratch on him, you know, I'll go out, he lives out here. I'll just go up there and I'll come up and just scratch on him and hang out with him for a while and just walk away. Sometimes I'll bring him out here and um, just let him eat the grass and just sit on the ground and just basically uh, be with him without asking anything and there was a girl at a clinic in, in uh, Australia recently she's a Pirelli professional and I was talking about this and she said oh yeah Pat calls it Pat Pirelli calls it oh it's not unrequiring time undemand, undemanding time undemanding time just hanging out with your horse and you know as a professional horse trainer for many years that's something I never did and now that I have my horses at home and stuff like that stuff I'm starting to do more of but just I think there's a lot to be said for 10 year old girl training and what 10 year old 10 year old girls do with the with the horses so anyway that's my little um lesson for today is that I think we'll, all our horses could probably do with a little bit more 10 year old girl training so I hope that helps we'll see you guys next time